Welcome to Nathan Boxing Live. I'm lucky to be joined by Dylan White. Where's the uh, Body Snatchers here, the Peacock Gym. Um, Train hard with Mark Tips today. Yeah, yeah, Just letting the hands fly a bit, you know. Yeah, letting the um, bombs go. Let, tell me how um, training camp started for you and how you're feeling with it all at the moment. Training camp started good, you know, I feel good, you know, I feel, um, you know, I did some time out, you know, sort a few things out. You know, we have a few things to arrange, you know, boxing takes a lot of time out, so sometimes you get a bit of free time. You have to, you have a lot of backlog of things to do, so I've just been doing that now. Back to the grind, training, feel good. Now it's just about getting my weight down, getting my energy back and stuff, and I feel good. I've been training now for a few weeks now, and I feel good, I'm starting to feel really good. I saw a documentary of you recently, um, and mm. you uh, speak about how before when you had your fights, like coming through like your first 17 or so fights, yeah. how you didn't have all these treatments and stuff, no. like your muscles and stuff. How are you feeling the effects of that now, now you can have that kind of treatment? It's, it's good, man, you recover a lot better. Your injuries take, you don't get injured as much, your injuries go a lot quicker. You know, um, you know, like anything, you know, it, if you do something day in there, it wears you down. Like, so you gotta look after it. You gotta look after it. You know, you gotta look after. That's it. Your car, if you drive it, drive it. it runs a petrol. You gotta service it. You put petrol in and stuff like that. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just servicing the the engine now and, 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 and you know maintaining myself, making sure I eat right, look after myself, physio. You know, it costs a lot, but you know it, it, it's beneficial. Um, I know eventually you'll end up going down to Loughborough. So you have a yeah, yeah. training base down there. Yeah. How did that come about and why do you choose to go to Loughborough rather than anywhere else? Because it is where I think they, they won 20 something gold medal at the last Olympics, you know, across the, the, the um, different sports. So a lot of Britain's top Olympians is there across our sport. And there are a lot of rugby and a lot of stuff like that. Training a lot of big guys to move faster, be stronger, recover better, and stuff like that. So. You know, and um, when I look at it and I watch the fights back, I see where I was going wrong. I was in terrible shape, wasn't recovering enough, wasn't explosive enough. Then I had an honest conversation with myself and, you know, I spoke to my team and they said, listen, you can't stay at home and train and expect to beat world level fighters, you know. And then we decided, yeah, it's time to, and then they went and, and sourced it and came back and said, yeah, this is your new home. <laughs> I was like, what? You know, it's far away. <laughs> But I said, well, if you want to be successful in boxing, and, and then this is what you're going to do. And that's what I did. I drive there Sunday, come back Friday for 14 weeks. So I think we saw that a bit in your last fight. Um, usually heavyweights, as we go down the stretch, obviously because of how big they are, they start to tire. Mm. But in round 11, you were still looking bit, and obviously you actually managed to get the knockout as well. Yeah. So is that what you say is the difference between maybe you and other heavyweights who don't have the opportunity to go to a place like Loughborough, that you I, can get the maximum out of it? No, not really, you know, because... Fighters are born, man, you know, some guys got incredible power, some guys got incredible stamina, you know. I was good enough, but there's the elite, and the elite do elite stuff, and that's what I, I'm trying to get to working towards, you know. So, so, and it's, it's all about time, you know, it's all about time, you know, these things, it's about level and time and taking your time to get into that level, you know, and, and sometimes you have to make mistakes to, to understand and know where you're going wrong and, and, and you have to be honest with yourself as well. Cause a lot of guys ain't honest with themselves, you know. A lot of guys have got yes men around them and they say, oh, don't worry about it, you lost because of this, you lost because... No, you lost because you was out of shape, didn't train properly and you was injury ridden because you're not looking after yourself. And then you have to be honest and, and hear it. Some guys make excuses, you know. I want to talk a bit about your management stuff you're doing now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fabio Wardley, I know mm -hmm. you've uh, signed him. I've actually, I saw Fabio Wardley for the first time a few years ago, sparring Tom Little down to Hoddesdon, mm -hmm. and that was when I think Mervyn Turner was bringing him through. Mm -hmm. And now obviously you've taken him on. Can you tell him, what, tell us what kind of stuff has he done in the gym to improve? And he must feel a lot of influence seeing what you do day in, day out, because now you're up there with the elite heavyweights, and that's obviously where he wants to be as well. Fab's very ambitious and he trains hard, and he's hungry, and he's young. It's got to guide him the right way and pick the right fights for him and take your time with him because he's so young. But um, he's a good fighter. He's, he's got it all. He's got power, he's got reflex, but he just needs to keep his hands up a bit more. That's my only criticism of him at the minute because that heavyweight, one punch and you're done. I know he's a reflex fighter, I like to use his reflex, but I'd like to see him keep his hands up a tiny bit more. And that's all, man. He's doing good. He's knocking people out. He's at a stage now where he's knocking people out. He's moving up, putting in the rounds, and he. he you know, he's likeable as well, so, so you know, that's the only thing. Keep his hands up a little bit more, that's all. And obviously, um, very good friend of yours, Pesta, 
Dre Harden Jr. fights um, this Saturday mm. and we spoke with him a few times down here actually and you can see how excited he is to fight on the big stage like he's bringing a new like level out of him and he can't stop smiling and talking about it. he's posting about it a lot on social media as well what does an opportunity like this mean to him and also what's it like down for him it, it means the world to him but I say to the press listen don't make this get ahead of you keep your feet in the ground I understand it's a big deal for you but aspire for bigger things take it in your step don't Make it be such a big event that you lose your mind when you get there and don't box properly. It's difficult. I know it's massive for him because, you know, obviously he's been around a while, he ain't really doing anything, you know what I mean? So for him, this is a big thing. What I say to him is, you know, if you believe in yourself and work hard enough and the will, if you can win titles, it's not just about fighting at the whole two, it's about winning titles and making some money and all that. But it's a good friend of mine, I just wanted to help him, you know what I mean? He's a good lawyer, friend of mine, you know. He's very, I give him a lot of steak and we have a lot of joke and a lot of banter together, but he's a good friend of mine, he's a lawyer. He's one of the most loyal people you ever meet, you know? So I'm just happy that I was able to be in a position to help him and give him a chance. Even though we're very far away from life after boxing for Dylan White, but mm. is that something that you're going to pursue after boxing, maybe even more, managing fighters? Well, you never know. I might even train a few guys. Let's see. I'm, I'm not a bad trainer taking a few guys and training them and stuff, whatever. But let's see, man. I might just decide, you know what? That's it. I retire and turn into the new job at the hut for Star Wars. Just get huge. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going to happen, man. Let's see. Yeah. Um, obviously, massive news that's happened in heavyweight boxing, which obviously is going to involve you in heavyweight boxing. Um, Joel Miller failing a drug test. Is that something Jeez. that you saw coming at all, or is that completely surprise? I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all, man. You know, Miller weighs the same as 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 um as a, as a truck. You know, and he never gets tired, and he throws a lot of punches. You know, it's impossible. Right now, I'm like two two sixty five to seventy. I get down to two forty. And when I throw a punch, I get tired. <laughs> so I need to talk to someone that's 320, 315. You know, come on, man. And he's the same height as me. You know, come on. You know, must be taking something to, to maintain that. You know, and then there you go. The proof is in the, proof is in the blood test. What's your feeling towards that? Because a lot of people say, like, he had the lottery ticket. Even if Fortnite didn't go well for him, he would earn crazy money and then, then he can pretty much do anything after boxing. He probably just got scared, man. I think he just got scared and he's thinking, well, AJ's on TU, he's on the juice too, so I'm going to get on the juice, you know. All these people, don't worry about what others are doing, worry about what you're doing, you know. And that's the classic mistake he made, he's worrying about what others are doing, so we're worrying about what he's doing and focusing on himself and it went wrong for him. Um, it was recently um, said that you were putting yourself in the frame to fight on the June uh, first card. Is that something you are interested in? Yeah, of course, man, of course, you know. Um, I never say no to a fight, I don't turn fights down. Everyone knows this about me, so. Yeah, the terms is right, whatever. I know it's short, no, it's, I've been training now for a few weeks, you know. And I'm always up for, for, for saving the show for the fans. You know, I'm always up for saving the show for the fans. Um, how realistic is it of an opportunity for you to, or a chance for you to be fighting on June the 1st? Well, it depends on Eddie and man, and my team. You know, I'll fight tomorrow. <laughs> That's not an issue for me. I go in there and give it my all. I give it my best. That's where you find me as a, as, a, as a person, as a fighter. And as I give it my all, I'm okay. I'm happy with that, you know. What can you say? Oh, you give it his all. Oh, he lost this person, lost that person. Or, uh, I don't care. I, I, I did it. I fought. I went out and gave it my all. I didn't hide or duck anyone. You know, I done my thing. Um, there's some of the rumoured names that have come out. Michael Hunter, Manuel Shah, um, Luis Ortiz, I believe, isn't interested in the fight due to training camp. Mm. I think it's only Luis Ortiz is the only one he can really fight. Who wants to see him fight Michael Hunter or Emmanuel Shaw? You know? Who want, nobody don't want to see that fight. Yeah. You know? I mean, Adam Kalnaki was one that was put forward as well because he's highly ranked in the IBF. Um, also, he said he wasn't ready for a six. Yeah, because he's on the same thing Miller is on. They're teammates and they train together and they're both same body type and they both throw a lot of punches. And the same thing Miller is on, so now he's thinking, shit, they caught Joel, I need, I need, to, I need to, 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 to flush this thing out. So if it wasn't to be you, for, for whatever reason, if it to you, who do you think is a credible enough opponent who isn't Luis Ortiz either to be in the ring with Joe? Um, I don't know, if with them. Um, I don't know, they'll, they'll, fight, they'll find someone, man. You know, it's boxing, they'll find someone. They'll find someone, you know, they'll find someone. I have no idea. Who else could it be?
you know, what else could it be? I don't know. There's not a lot of options at all. You know, that's the only reason why I reserve my rights and take my time, man. Yeah. There's a lot of options. You can, you, you, these guys can't run forever. There's not a lot of options. There's not a lot of top guys in the world of boxing at all. Have you heard anything else at all from the WBC? I know um, I've heard interviews recently about that kind of depends on what your next move is. Mate, I have no idea what's going on there, man. The movement of a decision, we, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just... My mindset is no, you know, I just keep fighting, keep chipping on away, keep moving forward, keep learning, keep improving, man. You know, I, I don't know. My team's doing the event, Eddie and that's doing the event. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Also, there's a lot of rumours flying around with Richard React at the moment. I mean, he came off for career best win. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be honest, I didn't even expect him to win in that good style. Because I know Tommy McCarthy is a very good, credible name as well. He's mm. been around in British boxing for a while. Um, can you tell us a little bit on what maybe could be happening with him next? You know, I picked that fight for Richard because I believe Richard could knock Tom McCarthy out. You know, everyone underestimated him because the way he boxed against Sam Hyde. I think he just got a bit nervous and a bit tense. You know, I know how good he is and I know how good he can be. So, I, you know, um, I wasn't surprised. You know, you could see everything I saw in my interview and said, yeah, Richard's going to knock him out. You know, Tommy is a good guy, I like him. You know, I know him, I speak to him as well, you know what I mean? Um, He's Irish Jamaican, same as I am as well. So, so you know, it was sad to see him, but this is business, you know. And, um, I think there's only three fights out there for Richard now in Britain. No, four. Isaac Chamberlain, Dan Juma, Bill and Smith, Lawrence Okoye. Luke Watkins, is he? No, no, no. But what's the point in fighting Luke Watkins? You smoke Luke Watkins in three, four rounds. Yeah. No point. You can't go from Sam Hyde, Tom McCarthy to Luke Watkins. Yeah. It's a backward step, you know. So it was a backward step. Luke Watkins just lost to Isaac Chamberlain. Might as well fight Isaac Chamberlain. I thought there would be a connection. I'm sure they're not used to train together for a long time and stuff. But that's boxing though, isn't it? You're in the same weight division. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're in the same weight division, man. You, you're current, you guys are the same level at the same time. Yeah. So it can happen, man. Um, so a little bit of your head of your fight night. If, if the Joshua thing doesn't get pulled off, I mean, you're definitely fighting in July, I believe. Yeah, 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 100%. It's what, there should be an, an announcement Saturday coming. And um, what kind of level of opponent are we expecting? Top, 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 top 10, you know. I, I, I'm just trying to fight top guys that I can learn and improve on. You know, what's the point of me fighting um, journeyman I keep busy fighting? It doesn't make no sense, man, you know. What's the point? I'm going to go and fight someone that I know I can knock over and you know, I want to try and fight the best guys I can fight. <laughs> well, you yeah. your predictions ahead of World of Brazil as well. I mean, it's a big punch in heavyweight battle. Black Dinter Wilder said he's going he's gonna to steamroll him, isn't he? You know, Brazil, I think he's too slow. And he's just not good enough. I think he's not good enough. He's tough, but he's not good enough. You know? I think, I, and I think he's scared of Wilder. I think he's genuinely scared of Wilder. You can see from the presses, the face of... He's generally a bit scared you know, of Wilder. You know, Wilder bashed him, and his brother bashed him up in a street fight and he p went and pressed charges against him. You know, you're on heavyweight, you don't do things like that, man. It's a fellow heavyweight, you have it out with him, you know. And your family was there as well. You, know, you should be defending your family, be a man, not just be a bitch and go and press charges, you know. And uh, just to round off, you know what you said earlier about um, Jay Harding and um, uh, like, how obviously he had a bit of a bad pass and he managed to turn it around. And that's why he's so excited about fighting on the big stage mm. because he's, he actually said like, don't ever give up because you can always turn your life around and have better things. Yeah. Do you think it's important that people like you, Jay, and other people who maybe have had different paths that, that they can bring that out and show that to other people so then they can see that their lives can be turned it, around? You know, I said take it step by step. You know, all it says to people, there's no point shouting from the bottom of a tower block. Try and get up to the middle or the top first and then your voice spread wider and louder, you know. You, you can sit at the bottom and shout, oh, no one, no troop ain't gonna hear you. I get it, you're happy. I say to piss, concentrate, win these fights, get a bigger platform, get up there and then start spreading, you understand? Don't just put too much pressure on yourself. Take your time, you know. Take your time and do it bit by bit, step by step, stage by stage, you know. And you see time and time when people are pressure on themselves and then they crumble or they don't do things the way they should. Okay, thanks for coming to Boxing. No worries, bro. Cheers. God bless you.